Today, we're going to experiment with different materials for a dome tweeter. The results might surprise you, so make sure to watch until the end to find out. First, we're using a silk dome tweeter in the simulation software. A lot of people enjoy the listening experience with silk tweeters because they produce a soft and clear sound. However, as you can see, the frequency response isn't perfectly flat across the entire range. There's a dip and a bump here. Now, let's take a look at the directivity plot. But before we do that, we'll increase the number of measuring points and reduce the number of frequencies to get a clearer directivity pattern. When we compare this to ribbon tweeters, you'll notice the directivity pattern is much wider here, and it narrows as we increase the frequency. Next, let's mark the dip and bump frequencies to analyze the tweeter's behavior at those points. Any frequencies close to the marked ones are considered acceptable. Now, Try a different material for the first part of the surround. Congratulations! The dip and bump are gone. However, we still have another bump here, and it's important to understand why. At this frequency, the dome moves irregularly. Changing the material could be the solution. Although plywood isn't typically used for the dome part, we selected it to better understand how material stiffness and damping affect the frequency response. After using plywood, the peak is gone, and the resulting curve is smoother and more extended. Let's try polyamide film. Polyamide film is typically used in voice coils and protective components of tweeters, rather than in the dome itself. In dome tweeters, the dome is usually made from materials like silk, polyester, or nylon to achieve desirable acoustic properties. Polyamide is primarily used in voice coils because of its high resistance to heat and mechanical stress but we use it for dome to see how it affects the frequency response, and it is possible to use it for dome in the real world. Now, let's try aluminum. This material is actually used in real world applications. Its low weight and high stiffness allow for a flat frequency response across a wide range though its damping isn't high enough to eliminate the larger peaks. As you can see, there's a significant peak here. While it may be outside our hearing range, it can still affect the brain indirectly. To achieve smoother results across the full range of human hearing, we can experiment with polyester and other materials. Copper is a relatively heavy material. While it has good stiffness, its high weight reduces sound pressure significantly. Thanks for watching.